What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Chris Gethin podcast. I know that this looks like quite the different studio at the moment. It looks like we're both sat in thrones, and rightfully so. We deserve <laughs> thrones. But I am back here with a previous guest and my very, very good friend, Dr. Dom. What's up, brother? What's up, my man? Good to have you here. So we are in Amsterdam at the moment. No, we're not going window shopping. We're not going to the red light district. We're here for the biohacking summit, for the biohacker summit. The biohacker and summit. Uh, we've just been inside the event, had a good look around, and we have decided to pop out to the hotel and do a much overdue podcast. I think the last time that we spoke was probably about three years ago on the podcast, yeah, something like that. Beginning of COVID. Yeah. yeah, beginning of the C word, yeah. So for those of you that don't know my very good friend, Dr. Dome, and that did not listen to the previous podcast that we are gonna link below because you should. Can you give us a little bit of an introduction about who you are and what you do, my man? <laughs> okay, my name is Dr. Dom, Dr. Dominic Nischwitz. I'm um, known as a biological dentist or they sometimes call me world leading biological dentist. That's I call not what you I that. say. I That's call you that. that. Definitely one of the international spokespeople for that thing. Yeah, I studied dentistry. I'm a biological dentist ceramic implant specialist but i think calling me a dentist isn't really cutting it more like no, also really. health optimization expert father book author health enthusiast bodybuilder that's where we all like connect a lot of bodies so we just hit the gym this morning obviously because he's the man when it comes to this and i want to be having gains too and we so both it's more health optimization expert yeah. i would say but my thing is optimal health starts in the mouth and this is in my opinion the most overlooked body part yeah, because it's classically from a conventional dental point of view, it's just teeth are there to repair and medical doctors usually don't really look into the mouth. So I'm there to cross link the mouth as a part of your body being the entrance to that system. And sometimes there's even things that might cause problem, problems mm -hmm. in the long run. Yeah, so like a lot of you may be thinking, why on earth is a dentist on this podcast? <laughs> and you know, like I couldn't even see when, until I met Dom, I didn't even realize the correlation between mouth health and optimization, not just for your brain, your body, absolutely everything. Like I know that, uh, you know, Dom would like to do a complete reval of my mouth and he is going to in February next year. But what has astounded me is like, look, my, my tongue is blue at the moment. I'm doing everything that I can to optimize my brain health as well. But it starts in your mouth. And a lot of biohackers will take a lot of nootropics. They're doing everything, you know, putting MCTs in their coffee, anything that's going to sharpen their brain, make them feel a little bit better, enhance their memory, their recall, their focus. But a lot of that stems from their mouth. Could you give us a little bit of a background and interject us with some knowledge of the connection from our teeth to our brain? Yeah, at this point, it would actually be great to insert a picture of how the teeth are connected to your brain. They're basically an extension of your brain, like your eyes. So you have to understand, in the brain, you have 12 cranial nerves. They start in the brainstem, and one is called the trigeminal nerve, which is has three branches. One is lower jaw, one is upper jaw, and one is here like the frontal nerves, not the eyes. But this nerve is 50% space of all these 12 other nerves. The vagal nerve starts there. And at the end of the nerve, you have these teeth, which are 32, ideally, as an extension of your brain. So, but in conventional dentistry, or most people think, teeth are just little tiny things that you can bite on. And conventional dentists are trained to repair them, kind of like the garage for your car, fix bites and smiles, so to speak. But they're never, we are never trained to see it as, an, as a part of your body, especially a part of your nervous system. It's really an extension of your brain. And these organs, like all your teeth, have a nervous system, an autonomic nervous system, blood supply, lymph supply. They're really organs that you can bite on. And whatever you do on them mechanically can affect the whole body. And obviously the brain, it's a part of your brain. Yeah, interesting. I'm apologizing right now as well because I did ask the hotel, is there a quiet area? And they said here. And now there's just a lot of background noise. So hopefully it's not distracting you. And we do have our microphones, so hopefully it's not being picked up, but it's distracting me a little bit. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh. 
just typical. But anyway, so going back to how it correlates with the brain. So I know, for instance, you deal with a lot of people that have root canals. Uh, you have dealing with people who have implants, such as myself, titanium implants. Yes. And then, of course, you know, I've got the gold tooth because I think it looks badass. It looks badass. But there's a few things <laughs> that have an issue here that yeah. maybe normal dentistry doesn't really acknowledge, but biodentistry does. And can you tell me what that is and why? So yes, just for all of you, conventional dentists, they are just there to repair. That means you can bite on the tooth. Obviously, we use a shitload of different materials that work in your mouth for biting. Yeah, you can easily bite on a gold tooth, you can bite on a root canal, and you have no issue with it. But what is your immune system saying about different materials? What is your nervous system saying about these things? So you have to understand it is a whole body system. And like you pop a pill, it, just, it doesn't just work in your mouth. You take it and it works systemically. So whatever has been done in your mouth will have an effect systemically, even though you probably might not even feel it. So I always ask every single audience that I give a keynote on, can you please stand up and remain standing if you have or had metals in your mouth? Like you do. Yeah, metals in your mouth, stand up. If it can be amalgam filling, can be titanium implants or gold crown, doesn't even matter, stand up. And the next question is, you have or had a root canal treated tooth, which is essentially a dead body part, stand up. And the last and final question is always, did they remove your wisdom teeth? And you know it, whatever conference, at the end, 90% at least stand up because everyone has some sort of an oral health interference. And this is the point I'm, I'm going, I want to make in this realm of biohacking, health optimization. We're talking about gut health, about brain health, about all the different modalities you can do and you should do. Nutrition should be on point, supplements should be on point. But the thing is, if this is all on point and you're still not feeling superhuman and you just answered one of these questions with a yes, then it's time that you look into a biological dentist who understands that the mouth is the entrance to your body and it's showing you the overall picture. And if you have metals, root canals or would remove wisdom teeth, there's an underlying chronic inflammation that might cause 24 seven stress in your body, fight and flight. And you can't, you cannot biohack the way around this one because it's installed in your mouth 24 seven like yourself. You can't compensate, but maybe it's holding you back. It's being the splinter in your body that never goes away. Yeah, and, and one thing that I think is fascinating as well is that if you have metal in your mouth as well, it acts like an antenna. If you have that phone next to your <laughs> mouth, uh, you know, next to your head, then that's acting as an antenna as well. Yeah. So that could potentially, if you're trying to mitigate EMFs, for instance, you could be enhancing EMFs. You not could, you will enhance EMFs, because this has been shown clearly in research that, for example, if you had an amalgam filling, like the silver black fillings, just having a phone call will increase the mercury vapor coming out of that filling, it leaching out even more and intoxicating you more. Or whatever metal you have here on the body, also piercings, will be the antenna. So it's, it's that's just simple, let's say, physics and chemistry that um, if you have a phone call, usually the electromagnetic waves go to your cell phone and back to the tower. If you have any sort of metal in your mouth, it will go to that metal, then to the phone in the back. And mm. it can be amplified up until, I think the research is saying 400 to 700 fold. And if you understand that your, your cell is, or your body is like a, a battery, it's electric and has a very tight, let's say, range of the microcurrents, mm. it will change it. it. It's just interfering with your nervous system. It doesn't mean that it, it will change everything within a second but it's again EMS is a cumulative effect and if you have antenna in your body it will change your nervous system it will change your cell electricity and just changes everything it causes nitrosative stress oxidative stress all the variants we're always talking about so it's really important to understand that people are getting more and more it's called electro hypersensitive yeah and this is a thing that is woo woo in classical medicine but it's not and it's so logic that if you have any metal, metals in your body, that you're walking antenna. We are anyway cyborgs. We're with our phone all day long. Imagine you're just amplifying everything in that system that should be, yeah, balanced. Interesting, yeah. And you don't all just look at the mouth to optimize people's health. Like, for instance, I know that if someone comes to you, and by the way, Dom has international clients 
lining up to go see him. Like I think all of your clients, you're based in Germany. All of your clients last week were from America. Yes. Every single one of them. Yes. So, yeah, people fly in mostly from, in, I would say at least 60%, probably even more, come from international places. A lot of them come from the US, but even China, Japan. I, I, it's funny. I, I find it fascinating where they all find me now, but I'm there to help anyone anyways. Yeah, you basically, uh, you have to kind of apply for an appointment. I don't know if you say that word in English. Yeah, apply. You have to apply for an appointment. And then what we do up front is you send in your case. I just need a simple two-dimensional panoramic x-ray digitally and the medical questionnaire. And then we plan everything according to one principle. We want to, I want you to, I want you to be interference free, which means no metals, no root canal, no cavitations. And we plan it in this case. So you know up front what are the steps to take in order to see us, how to prepare for the surgery, how to get anabolic so your body is healing. And then so that before you even see us, you prepare it. And then you come in for, let's say, a health optimization week where we take out all the metals safely. That's important. Where we take out the root canals and place immediate ceramic implants, not titanium, no metals, and clean out all the cavitations but make sure that your body is able to heal it. And most patients, let's say the average person, is not in an anabolic state. They're most likely more catabolic, breaking down tissue, are in a stressed mode. I don't want to do surgery for them or anything. So you have to be prepared. And then when you're there, it's quite charming because we do it all in one. So you basically clean from the inside. Then you have a healing period for about four months until all this stuff is let's say, grown into your system, and then you follow up, come back for the crown work, which is the aesthetic part and the functional part. So it's what sometimes you go to dentist just to take out a root canal, and then you wait three months for surgery, and this, this you have like 10, 15 appointments, and at, in, uh, international patients tell me this, I can just come in to see you, and this all been done in a week, and it actually, if I calculate all the appointments I would have at a regular dentist, even though it's an hour drive, it would take me more. Yeah. more time and more extended periods of and time and more expensive when and you're probably doing more visits more, yeah more yeah this is what a dentist never sees that you have to take off your job a day you have to drive to the dentist like this is all cost and time and stress and whatever so we were, wanted to compress it then obviously to make you heal fast we use everything in from biohacking health optimization as you know in the clinic being at hyperbaric iv therapies nutritional protocols it's all in there you name it, just to make sure your body is really healing. Yeah, so you have this clinic, yeah. basically, where you health optimize people there throughout the week, like you said, with IV's HBOT, but you actually prepare people with a specific nutritional and yes. supplemental protocol yes. weeks leading up and months following. Yes, depending on where you come from. Luckily, in the realm of bodybuilding, fitness, health optimization, people are a little bit more prepared because you're already doing everything that's needed. So. Usually you can actually come quite fast, but most people on average need about four weeks to six weeks to really prepare. Because for example, we will ask for their current vitamin D3 blood work. And what we need to, because we know that in research we need, let's say a level in the optimal range, which, was, which would be above 60 nanograms in order to help bone building, tissue growth. It's all about nutrient distribution. And if you're in a deficit, you're just in hibernation mode and can't heal. So we ask for the D3 level and we, we formulate everything around high levels of vitamin D3, high levels of protein, amino acids, bodybuilding also, so to speak, to make sure your body comes in fully prepared. So let's say if you're already prepared, you can sometimes get a fast track appointment within two weeks, but usually it's about, let's say, four to eight weeks time until you come in. And then the post-surgical phase, is at least to be four months in that anabolic phase. Anabolic, you know what it means. It just means your body is in a surplus. It has nothing to do with steroids or anything. It just means that your body can build tissue. Mm. So we optimize how much macronutrients we take. They're following the food design protocol I've designed, meaning we skip all the bad stuff to eat. And they learn how to think in macronutrients. And the single most important one is always protein. Yeah. Even for healing, especially for healing. And then you really see how people overall heal. Because I'm interested in the story of the patients like, I've seen 29 different doctors. I was depressed. I had chronic shoulder pain. Whatever. I had um, gut issues. I, my skin was bad. We took out all the interference and now I'm 90% better. 
and I have healthy and nice aesthetic teeth. That's the focus I'm going after. That's the fulfilling part. You can do your little manual craft, which is still dentistry is a, what is this in English? A high skilled manual labor. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it's an art form, plus then the patient healing. This is the fulfilling bit for me. Because this is what I love. If patients tell me this is better, like the one, remember, like two minutes or 30 minutes ago oh, yeah, outside, yeah. One follower just showed up and said, I wanted to thank you, Dr. Nam. I didn't come to your clinic, but you told me about that root canal. I had gut issues. The dentist took it out the way you described it too. And now it's gone, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you witnessed yeah. it. And this is what fulfills me. And I think this is why we do the next level of dentistry, which is not against dentists. It's just showing them, hey, we are so much more than just craftsmen. We are craftsmen, but we are also doctors. And we can see the whole body at one glance looking at your teeth can see decay that means your whole body has decay or depletion like there's a lot just from a, a lens into your mouth yeah like that's fascinating like that woman that said that she got rid of her gut issue because of the tooth issue that you told her that she had <laughs> but there's other stories that i've heard like someone has knee pain he could yes. be a soccer player yeah. has knee issues and you correlate that i'm assuming is it like with meridian lines what is it where you can associate that issue with that tooth and as soon as you fix that tooth maybe they've got like brain frog or the brain fog and they or they have knee issues or they have yes. gut issues but you correlate that with the mouth and as soon as you fix the mouth those issues go so we have a specific there's a specific chart showcasing how every single tooth has a specific connection with the meridian system i would say just with the autonomic nervous system for example the incisors are directly connected to your kidney and bladder meridian system the large intestine and it's more like the molars in the lower jaw. Then the wisdom tooth area is especially important because it's directly connected to your adrenal glands, to your central nervous system and to your heart and small intestine. So just imagine someone optimizing everything like in our realm. Diet is on point. Everything is Exercise, perfect. Exercise. Everything is perfect. Everything's per but she still or he still has acne or skin eczema. But it's already everything is good and they cannot find it then you have to understand oh here's a specific connection there could be a chronic inflammatory process in your jawbone leading to high levels of cytokines systemically being also connected to that area like physiologically putting that system under stress so as soon as you get rid of the stressor which is here it's just your nervous system this is far away from your nervous system here you get away from it toxins go out parasites virus fungi they all accumulate in that area Take it out, body gets out of stress, and this is all gone. Even though I worked in your mouth, your skin issue might disappear or your gut health mm. might disappear. And your small intestine finally can relax and you can better detox. It's a big detoxification organ, the small intestine, but also it's very important to uptake certain nutrients. And you know how many people suffer from irritable bowel syndrome, skin eczema, always correlate skin and gut issues, but the gut starts in the mouth, right? Mm. It's like That's this That's the microbiome. Tube. But it's this tube, the tube starts here and it ends there. Yeah. And in between is obviously the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all the areas. But where's the beginning? Like the rectum is here, but this is where it starts. Yeah. You eat, there's a huge microbiome in your mouth. And the microbiome in the mouth is actually the second largest and the most diversified. So that means we have way more species in your mouth than in the colon, for example. I think they found up to 700 different variants in the mouth and counting so that's really fascinating and obviously if you're eating a paleo diet or you focus in on healthy foods have the right macronutrients whatever you do whole food wise you have a total different oral microbiome than you, if you would eat the standard american diet mm. or a breastfed baby has a different microbiome than a formula fed baby and the good thing is that microbiome changes with the substrate within 12 to 24 hours so it's really fast but it doesn't really change if you had dental repair done so you have to at one point biohack the most unnatural thing in your body yeah or help someone hack this for you because what could be more unnatural than having a dead tooth or mm. having removed teeth or having metals in your mouth this is not the way how you came to this planet so i'm actually just helping your body recover from stuff that has been done wrong because the first thing what could go wrong is that a dentist uses a drill it's called a dental career in dentistry we learn it in university first lesson never use the drill if not necessary because as soon as you drill the tooth it's not a healthy tooth anymore right and you have a filling 
then you need a root canal, then you take out a tooth, so you get a titanium then you see the problem. Yeah. Same with the, why don't we have space for wisdom teeth? That starts already in the womb, or maybe even a generation before. Interesting. Super interesting, right? Yeah, it is crazy. And the one thing that I really appreciate is like, obviously, like over the years, God, we haven't even known each other for that long, but it feels like we've known each other for ages because we've become such good friends, is that, you know, we can't we're, <laughs> speak to each other nearly every day. Mm. But like, you know, I've come to you for certain types of help. You've come to me for certain types of help. But what I really appreciate you, especially within this community where biohackers like to do more and more and more. And sometimes they really overcomplicate the issue yes. where you kind of try to break, take things back down to the basics where, for instance, like you look into Chinese medicine or the yin and the yang and it's like, well, maybe we're just overthinking it where sometimes we wake up and we overcomplicate things. We start off in this sympathetic nervous yes. state. Mm. And then with that sympathetic nervous state, especially with myself, because this is something that you're helping me with, is that you overcomplicate things and you try to make things easier, but you in fact make it harder. Yes. And have you been able to, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that deal with a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Like you have an extremely busy schedule. You have your surgeries, you've written your books, you've got your courses, you're a father of four kids, <laughs> you've, and you're all, always, you know, going overseas and, and whatnot. Like, how have you been able to take things down to the basics in an environment that is kind of complicated and chaotic, and we've created it such, in such a way? But you simplify it. Like, when we had a talk yesterday, I felt so much better just after that talk. Because oh, nice. I'm like, okay, well, Dom's going to help me with this. And it seems so simple, but sometimes you just need that accountability yeah. to, to kind of see it through. Also, I think what you sometimes need is just, an, yeah, not an accountability part, but some, sometimes you just need an outside point of view. Same for me. We are in our bubble and we created the way we are right now and we can't see outside of it. So if you, when you told me about what you're dealing with in the morning, like with the bit of stress and you want to have everything done by 12 p.m. because then you go to the gym and then you can finally relax. I was wondering, okay, what is Chris prioritizing here right now? Why is he not prioritizing his health and first? And I, I just could, I could, could just answer him because I'm, just, I'm a little bit of the same cr um, creature. Like we are all high, let's say high dopamine performers, achievers, and we tend to strive on adrenaline. So we tend to, or this specific personal type, tends to do more of it because it actually, to be honest, it feels great to be on adrenaline. Yeah. It makes you focus, makes you sharp. It's dopamine, adre actually adrenaline, dopamine is a precursor to adrenaline. So it's go, go, go. And it's reward. And you said it like, I get rewarded after to relax. And I was like, why would you do that? And I had the same issue myself. So I call that designing the lifestyle, for example. And I just give an example of my life. So yes, because I'm a father now of four kids, I had to decide at one point, it was the same as was like, I want to have my workouts done because I love that so much and I need it. But I was always doing my surgery and then was thinking in my brain, I have to get fast with the surgery so I can do my workouts in the evening and then I come back home and then relax. And at one point I just realized, okay, if I want to be consistent with it, I need to make time for me personally first. And working out and training is, for me, this is meditation. This is an investment in my health. Mm. So I, saw, I thought, okay, the only way possible is I start at 5 a.m. I just try. So I woke up 5 a.m. and from the beginning I was like, so relaxing. I did my workout, it was quiet. I drink my aminos and before everyone was even awake, I was already back home at seven, cooked my meals and, and just prepared. And I realized over time, I was seeing it completely wrong. And I just have to, I realized, okay, my sharpest time for doing work, which is surgery to me or writing books or articles, is in between 10 and let's say 4 p.m. That's when I'm the sharpest. Before I tend to feel stressed during surgeries. I, don't, I didn't know why. But I realized, okay, because with that dopamine, adrenaline, and anxiety, guys, we tend to have a super high cortisol in the morning because we are hunters. Mm. We, we are there to actually fight first and do the hunt. And the training for me was my hunt. So I felt relaxed afterwards. 
Fadas is exhausting. For me, it's just like balancing all that energy in my head, that anxiety or whatever into my body and everything just feel, felt at ease. And I just went into the surgery. I realized over time that there is no time concept anyways. I, I don't, sometimes don't even know what time it is, which day it is. I'm just in the flow performing my life. And sometimes you just need to have a deload mm. or see it from a different perspective. Why not change things up? And obviously we both are working. When you're a doctor or a coach, you both of them, you need to be a coach or a psychotherapist. Yeah, even, yeah, for sure. Patients will ask you these things. And I believe when we heal ourselves for whatever type we come from and ask questions, we heal the many and help them because we've been there and we just know, okay, this patient might maybe needs this. He maybe needs not to do fasting because he's already on an adrenaline rush. He maybe needs to focus more on the yin side of things. So this is why I told Chris yesterday, what about switching it up and start with the workout, the stuff you love. And then you, we did it today and it feels good, right? Yeah. You, and then you, afterwards the work will just feel easier and you get actually more shit done even though you already did your thing for yourself. But you see, you just have to frame it differently. It is an investment in your health and you come first. Like moms always say, it, I would do everything for my kids and I come always last and I think, that's so stupid. In the plane, you're trained, the oxygen mask comes down, you help yourself first and then your kids. Yeah. This is how it should be. Help yourself first because only then you can help thousand more patients because you need to have your energy first. It's not, e that's actually not egoistic. That's actually the opposite. Help yourself first. And then if you feel good, you get so much more and you don't feel that you are like, you feel ahead of things instead of the opposite. Yeah. And yeah. Because if I switch it up, I tried it multiple times. I actually talked with my wife about this this morning and I said, how many times did I try to do again, get my work done first and then I do the workout and always goes into this, ah, I'm in an adrenaline state and then the, the worker doesn't even really feel good. Yeah. So get that out of the way, feel more, be yourself more instead of just go, 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 do, do, do. Sometimes what got you here, do, 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 do more, 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 doesn't work for the next level, I think. I think now it's time for us to step back, be more ourselves, inspire more people by being us and then getting more creative, feeling it a bit more. And then you can do things like, Having a surgery, having a team of 25, 30 people doing stuff for you, having, I also have a company, like you said, causes multiple different projects that, um, and I don't need to do everything. It's just more like systemizing everything and thinking about it. And I realize I can only do that when I'm in flow and being creative. Otherwise I'm just do, 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 go, go, go. So that's really, really important that you, I find everyone needs a, a boyo, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like an accountability partner, partner, yeah, to see it differently. Yeah, you have to be selfish in order selfish, to be yeah. selfless. The word I was missing. Selfish yeah. to be selfless, because like when you feel better about yourself, um, you're going to be a better person to be around. You're going to be a better husband. You're going to be a better father. You're going to get be a better work colleague, because you've prioritized yourself. And now you're calmer. You're in more of a sympathetic state, a parasympathetic state. Yeah, and yeah. I, I saw your aura da data yesterday, and it was, t it, is it okay if I say it? Yeah, Chris just, Chris just told me, my, my sleep is just so scattered. And I just looked at his aura data and looked like, okay, he's a sympathetic dominant person. That means his HRV is more in the range of, let's say, an average 20 to 30. And this is not bad, by the way, guys, because everyone in the biohacking world seems to be, person. HRV seems to, has to be high. No, that's wrong, okay? He is a sympathetic person, and you can also see he has a high REM sleep. So I know, okay, his brain has to do a lot. And from the stuff he tells me, he's always on it with his brain. So I know the energy in the brain needs to be transferred throughout the day. So I think a word for that would be the mental load needs to come down. And you can do that easily by focusing and being selfish on your body first, energy in your body. And then it feels easier. And you can probably then get you a bit more towards some parasympathetic because obviously you are sympathetic obviously you love to be that go 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 adrenaline guy but therefore i would not give you an intermittent fasting protocol i would actually do say no you, i know you don't do it but pe people that are like this tend to be i want to do keto i want to fast i want to do all these things why because it even fires more adrenaline but yeah. what happens over time is they burn out their adrenals and they're not feeling good anymore so what these people need to do is do the opposite, more yin. And you can do that with nutrition. 
I'm not like you in this case. I'm more like a, it's called a balanced body type. So my HRV on average is 50 to 60. This is my health. Yeah? If I get sick, let's say I, a virus hits, my HRV will drop to 20. If I'm overly stressed, let's say I'm on a diet, low fat, whatever, I want to get peeled, it happens that my HRV will go upwards in the 90s. Oh, wow. Why? Because my parasympathetic tries to kick in because I'm so depleted. My heart rate will go down to 33. Yeah. And I, let's say five years ago, I would think that is healthy. That is amazing because my heart rate is so low and my HRV is so high. But it actually just showed me, oh, I'm not in my balance anymore. My parasympathetic is working over shift to, and I'm basically killing my adrenal glands right now. Yeah. Mm. So you have to understand where you're at. And this is also in the food design concept that I created for patients. Step one is always remove all the shit because that's just a stressor. No gluten, dairy, refined vegetable, oil, conventional dairy, refined vegetable oils, the seed oils that everyone's talking about. It's all gone. Second phase is think in the right nutrients, whole foods that get you the nutrients. And the third bit would be I see your aura data as a patient and your body composition. And just from HRV, I can tell you, okay, you're a sympathetic person, balanced or parasympathetic person and I will design the energy nutrients according to that so everyone needs to go on high protein let's say two grams per kilogram or one gram per pound, pound of ideal body weight so you know what I mean but from there on it's do you need carbs or do you need more fats so people that are more parasympathetic dominant the opposite of us that have a high HRV on average let's say 80 plus some people have 120 on average they probably do good with high fats, lower meals, maybe can fast because they are a bit more sluggish. Mm. They just relax. My, hypoth my hypothesis is that most of the hugest bodybuilders that grow so much volume and tissue are probably parasympathetic oh, dominant. For sure. So they could get away with eating so much just lay down and then relax for the next day. But you and me are more sympathetic. We're more like a, let's say, we're more like a sports car eating 25 liters per, kil uh, per 100 kilometers. So if I see sympathetic, I will initially think you need more yin, and yin when it comes to food is carbs. And carbs is just plants. So it doesn't mean you need to eat vegetables, but plants could be potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, more bodybuilding type diet, and do this already from the beginning. Let's say multiple feedings a day. You anyways do it because you're a bodybuilder, but for you this would work as a therapy. So for you, fasting would get you over the edge. Mm. Even though you did it probably and felt good, it just makes you actually more angry and everything. So this is what I come up with over the years to fine tune within a second. Okay, this, people, this person needs to have more of a paleo approach. This needs to have more carbs, this person, depending on the nervous system actually. And then obviously I see there are stressors that still hold you in sympathetic, like the root canal that you have, the gold, the titanium, which needs to be addressed at one point, but you compensating for it quite good, so no stress about it right now. Mm. But a lot of people can't compensate anymore, and they are already chronically sick. And you know, chronic inflammation is the main issue for any sort of chronic health issue, being it mental issues, neurological diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson, or gut issues, or cancer, or everything that's chronic. Mm. You want to get rid of all inflammation so that your body can compensate again and be in a balanced state between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system because that's what it's all about it's about balancing it not about i want to push hard or i want to relax all the time you the branches sympathetic parasympathetic should switch within seconds so i can have a speech on stage obviously i want to be sympathetic to be focused and concentrate but i want to be get rid of it immediately afterwards this mm. is what the goal is yeah. there's the fight and flight but there's relax like an animal if there's the tiger they jump and as soon as like one zebra got bitten, the other ones just stand next to it and chill yeah. and while the other one gets eaten. This is how it should work, but we have so many stressors and a huge part of that stress system might even be the stuff that is installed in your mouth, mm. especially if you've done already everything. Yeah, and, and the one thing that we discussed this morning is sometimes you have this mental resilience that you think is helping you, but it's actually hindering you, you know, because you just said to me that, okay, well, you seem to be doing okay. Well, there's no stress. Well, maybe because that mental resilience is going, I'm fine. There's no issues. I'm ignoring <laughs> it. I'm in denial. Yeah. But you're actually getting sicker and sicker and sicker because you're not acknowledging the symptoms there. You're kind of denying them and forgetting about them. Or you already got used to them or numb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like the person who eats McDonald's every day. Yeah. Do they feel bad? No, because that's their norm. 
They don't know what good feels. Exactly. So you can use that for every little single bit. Right now, you are used to what you're at. You, like maybe I have tension here. What, I don't even feel it. Oh, from the leg workout. Yeah. I, from whatever. Because you're used to it. I get used to it. And I'm, we're both really good at, let's say, getting beaten up. And because we're like, I probably came up at the same area, like masculinity was everything. I need to be strong. So I hurt myself a ton skateboarding. And I would just break my elbow, didn't even realize it, and work, live with it for years. And just over beat myself and just don't listen to it. Basically building a shelf around me mm. about all the other sensitivities or yeah. sensibilities. I'm actually quite a sensitive guy, more emotionally speaking, but I probably built a wall around it and getting this one balanced again. I think this is where it comes to accepting. It's more like accepting the feminine side of things. So I always got triggered extremely. We talked about this when someone is a hypochondriac or he will tell me all the time what, what is nagging, hurting, it would trigger me to do the opposite. To say like, ah, let's let it go. Your body will deal with it, whatever, because I'm that, I'm that person. I learned to be this person because I hate if someone is crying. It kills me from the inside. So yeah. I rather don't go there and pretend everything is fine. And at one point you just trust it. But I learned from friends that are a bit more in this direction that my weakness was actually to not talk about the sensi sensitivity side. So I would never like tell another man about feelings, for example, that this one hurt me or whatever. I would rather say, nah, go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we all grow and get more balanced. That doesn't mean it should be 50-50, but I'm more like 85%. So us, we are more like, if you tell me to do 100%, I would probably do 150. You too. There are other people, you tell them to do 100%, they do only 70. You have to tell them 120. So balance it out on both ways is important. I think it's best if you have some accountability partner or good friend. And uh, in your team, I always call it the wolf pack. Um, that helps you. And all together, I think we should share what we've learned, build it now together, and then grow bigger and help many people and inspire them. Be the health avengers. Be the health avengers because there are so many steps you can take on your own just by following us and what we're teaching you step by step so that you just have warp speed healing and then you can enjoy your life. And we, I just wanted to show, we both also struggling on a daily basis with different things, but then we never give up, right? Yeah. We just find a new solution, we implement it and then we see a new perspective to it. It's like, oh wow, why not switch it up? Why always hurry? Why not just have a lifestyle, like a deload from life? That's what we talked in the mm. morning, like realizing if I do surgeries for three months, four months in a row without a break, I start to not enjoy it anymore. I get stressed. So I realize, okay, I need a break every eight weeks, maybe. Let's just say three days, get it off. And then you come back fresh. It makes more fun. So it's kind of like your training route regimen. At one point, you maybe need a week off. Same for your life. Yeah. Imagine you do it all day long. Of course, you can push, push, push. I don't think it's good to push all the time. No, of course. It needs to be balanced. And you actually do that. Like you just, you were in Bali, I don't know, six, five, six weeks ago? Was it something like that? In, yeah, in some break. And, you, and you're going to take another break now. You're going to go to uh, Dubai here. Yeah. So you actually strongly suggest people take those breaks off, go for a week, break, and then go back if you can, and dependent if your job is stressful or your life is stressful. Especially if you are a person that is a high achiever because yeah. you can't help it. I can't help it. My days are packed because I'm just that guy. I love it. I don't want to have stuff wasted. I love to have this idea, meet my friends, do a new idea, do a new project. Do, I just love it. But also, obviously, from the per, ty, uh, personal type I am, I never see that there's a, a limit. Probably and when I reach the limit, I'm already over it for three weeks. Yeah. Then I realized, oh shit, it was too much. Yeah. And I don't want to do that. I want to learn from my mistakes and implement breaks. So you told me, actually, you told me, dude, you need to have every, let's say every second or every third day, you need to have an off day, a recovery yeah. day, because I would lo love to do training every single day. It's just too much. So you forcefully have to plan in recovery days for some people. And this is again, Chinese medicine. I'm a liver type, liver gallbladder type, wood type. You too. So this is actually the only body type or um, type that needs, really for us, sport or movement is medicine.
but we're the only ones that don't see the limit. We mm. would always do too much. So we need to have that break designed in. And I see everything as a little bit of a, let's say of a, yeah, of a routine on a daily basis. You can also implement it into your life. And this is why I realized, okay, I need to have a break from pushing and doing and things and just do something different. That doesn't mean that I go on vacation in Bali and I just hang in a hotel and, and on the beach in the sun. That's not me. No, you'll have time that you do your work, but you'll work and play as well. Usually what happens is I don't have my main work, which is surgeries, obviously yeah. not on vacation. I, have, I want to spend specifically more time with my family and kids in the present. But in order to do so, I still keep my routine. That means I still wake up early, anyways do, and I still start with a workout, always. Yeah, workout or recovery day. Recovery day is still sport. You know, 35 minutes of cardio. Every single day I start with sport because this is my medicine. It helps my neurotransmitters. It balances it out. And then I can be present for my kids. And while be present in sunlight, grounding, in, so like superhuman grounding is always standing barefoot in the water. It's the best, in the sun. While this, then if all the stress goes away and I have like say two to three weeks, I finally realize my creativity comes back. I mm. get more visions, I get more ideas, and I need that breaks. So a big break like the Bali thing is like maybe once a year, like three weeks. But every six, let's say every eight weeks, I try to have forcefully at least five days of clinic. And it's amazing if you do that. And also at the end of the day, like we talk about it, if you have the museum of your life and you want to go in this museum, like in all the shelves, what do you see? Do you see like you had more time in surgery or more work or more emails that you answered or do you see like this beautiful um, time on Bali, this time with your best friend, this time where you drank just a coffee and had an idea. You know, you get what I mean. The so red light district in Amsterdam. The red light district in Amsterdam, <laughs> whatever you want to do. I think if you have that in your mind that you want to enjoy every little second and obviously there are things that you don't like to do, but if you can make it towards everything is like a little kid, you're just going out and play. That's my thought process. Mm. And this is what I'm building to. So if I do surgeries, that's just art for me. It's an art form. I do the surgery and I know this is my timing and I help people and I, there's no stress at all. But obviously my nervous system over time, it is just, you have to be focused. Mm. Even though I don't feel it, for me it's just fun. So I program everything so that I have fun doing whatever I do. Mostly helping people, creating things, creating systems and ideas and just have an impact to change, basically to change the way how dentistry and medicine is done, to see people it's possible to reach optimal health. But it's the daily things you do, the structure you have that you need, like you have to have a good nutrition, yeah. you have to have a good lifestyle, but you have to implement things like this. It's not all about work. Yeah. Actually, if you're more in balance, your work is more balanced. This is really weird, but it, that's what works. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, fascinating. I like I like the museum analogy. That's a this good answer. one, right? That's really cool. So before we wrap this up, I want to know, like for instance, like you said, that you prioritize yourself. Tell me, uh, give me a rough overview of your day, what it looks like, and when you switch your phone on and start uh, reacting to work. Yeah. So I think this is quite common that you try to not look at the screen or try to not look at the screen first, but maybe get sunlight first. So what I do is I just, I think that's just my circadian rhythm. I just wake up, let's say 6 a.m. every single day, just in program, and I don't go to the phone first. First thing I do is I have my little drink with a little bit of apple cider uh, vinegar in it, lemon in it, and then my aminos, my hydration, and then I will, after let's say 30 minutes, I maybe go outside, ground barefoot, have a little coffee, then I do my workout and usually kids will go to school at that time or already gone. So I have an hour for myself because you have to see besides this one hour for myself where I'm really in the present for me, that's it for the day. Afterwards, I'm a dad. Afterwards, I'm in the clinic. Afterwards, I have patients. And maybe at the end of the day, I'll have another hour with my wife. But that's it. It's the only time for me. So I, this is really priority. I do that do the cardio and then I come back up. Then I have breakfast with Steffi. I take my time for cooking the food. I, I prep all my meals. I do my oral routine, my hygiene routine at the same time. I sit down forcefully and relax. And I, at this point, I probably 
didn't even check phone or maybe I checked it a little bit for fun and did a little Instagram story, but definitely or, or not work related, not work related, no mail, no mail for sure. I, I would never touch mail before it's 11 a.m., never. Uh, and um, so if it's fun for you, let's say Instagram story or whatever, it's different. I use it sometimes, but when I touch like work related emails or work related WhatsApps, I make sure I had done the most important thing in my day already. So that's either surgery or on an off day, it's maybe writing an article or maybe writing on a script or having a podcast. Because as soon as I go into reacting to things like there's a patient as waiting for a question or whatever, I actually get distracted from what I really want to do. It costs energy. And then you become it's, addicted to it. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to make decisions. And I don't want to make any decision. Also, my whole team is instructed to never talk to me or tell me any problem before I finish my surgery. I don't want to know. It doesn't even matter. You can, that can wait until after. Yeah. Because I know I've done my work. I have got my best work for that, for that healing process for the patient. I've done the surgery. Imagine I have an info before that something goes wrong or whatever unnecessary thing. That's not going to help. You no. can't help and it's not going to help the my patient. Brain, my brain will be in stress mode and thinking about it while I do surgery doesn't help at all. It will always have time. So this is a, a thing, I probably have 24 hours to respond to everything. There's never a stress. The good thing is if you're in that realm, you control it. So also what is a good thing is I don't have any notifications. My WhatsApp is blank. That or Maybe my friends will realize that I never ask, answer back immediately because I don't know. I have to forcefully open WhatsApp and then I see, oh, there's a couple of questions that I have to answer. So because I know, okay, I will go into WhatsApp or email first thing after the first surgery, let's say 12 for 10 minutes. I only do it then. And then again, maybe after surgery at four. Or same thing on days I don't do surgery. I'm very structured when I use this phone mm. because I don't want to be used by the phone. Otherwise, it's the same. For me, the same. I'm just getting reactive. And I get into stress mode because every single advice you need to give someone, every question they ask, they take energy from you. So it has to be in exchange and loading up up front with the right, let's say, actually, I have two hours, three hours before I even start that mental capacity mm. to fill up everything and rebalance it. So basically loading up before everything. And then at the end of the day, when I come back after surgery or after whatever, let's say 6 p.m., at least I'm at home for dinner with my kids and family. That's the standard. And I want to have at least one to two hours, let's say one hour at least with Steffi from 8 p.m. to 9 or 9.30, where we just do nothing. Because up until that point, I work. Like there's constant stuff. And then I just binge watch Netflix for an hour. Yeah. That's it. And I don't have a problem with it. I find it extremely relaxing. Yeah, yeah. This is my winter time of the day. Yeah, spring, like spring, fall. And then winter time is I just lay like this. And I just watch one or two episodes and I try to be at bed 10 p.m., 10.30. Don't stress about it and do repeat, rinse and repeat. Yeah. And I do that on vacation too, just but way less mental load. Yeah. And you can even see it on the body, right? I showed yeah. you the pictures of my body after the vacation. I had more muscle, less fat, even yeah. though I probably enjoyed a little bit different foods, more calories. You just, just need more of a parasympathetic The stress, the stress yeah. load goes away. And this is how you have to balance it all out and realize I think it's the year that has seasons you have uh, like every season is different for your body too winter spring summer there's different energy in your body so summertime is when you produce and stuff but winter is there to relax and I think you have these seasons on a daily basis and this is how I see it morning is not is not to work I think the spring and summer of the day is more during the day and then winter is at night and you know what I mean mm. You understand? Yeah. This, this is how I think about it. And that feels good. It's a yin and yang in one day, in one month, in one, in one whole year. Yeah, I see. I think I've been trying to have my summer in the winter. And probably the summer every single day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every do, do, season. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, it was as a farmer, you had their season. Mm. There's time when you just can't farm. You yeah. just relax and eat the food. Hibernation mode. And we tend to go away from it because we have lighting and we have everything in. So I think if you feel your body a little bit more and you know, okay, summertime is when you push and wintertime is more when you maybe get creative and relax and plan for next spring, like planting something. Mm. Same for businesses, same for clinics, same for healing. I think that works fine and on a daily basis. Yeah. It's more about feeling it and being yourself and 
there is no the constructs of you when you have kids you realize there is no time you kids won't realize they make it the nap and then they ask you was it yesterday or when did we talk about this you realize they, they don't even know yeah so if you're in the flow i don't even know what day it is i don't even know what time it is i ask my nurses i don't even know i don't care yeah it doesn't matter i like that yeah. all right well thank you very much <laughs> this has been a very interesting conversation different around. one right yeah, it's now, a right? different one but i like that Th I like this that. is how we normally hang guys and we just talk about these things all day long and yeah. help each other so you've just sat in the living room with chris and dom on a little <laughs> daily chat really and we can talk the whole day like this yeah we and really we can. do yeah we do we do but we're not going to do that today we're probably going to go for a bit of a walkabout now yeah. and then uh hit the gym again tomorrow morning yes for sure and uh what, what are we hitting tomorrow i think we should do shoulders 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 maybe bits of bit of arms i did shoulders yesterday oh you did no. I did shoulders yesterday I, we didn't I, do arms. I can do arms i can do back yeah, yeah okay. let's do arms all right then i'll back you can do it we can do arms, arms or back all right Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Where can people find you, Dom, if they want to go and check your stuff out and contact you? The easiest is probably Instagram. The handle is Dr. Dome, D-O-M-E-1. And you will find links in my bio that lead to a new YouTube playlist for all the biological dentistry things, 16 videos. There's a tab bio which leads you to the clinic, leads you to my book, podcast. So I think that's the way to start. You yeah. find everything there and then go deep into the realm of optimal health starting in the mouth yeah which is the most overlooked and underrated body part actually. for sure for sure it's kind of like it's not even the body and it'll be it'll be fascinating please do follow his instagram it is fascinating because you could be for instance as an example brushing your teeth with a fluoride toothpaste or you know well washing your mouth with fluoride and you have no idea of the dangers on your system so make sure that you do check him out but thank you very much my man appreciate it as Thanks. always always best Okay, that is the Chris Kethin Podcast, and we are out. Peace.